Welcome back YouTube to another Apex uh, video. Today we're going to be showing y'all how to do a castle never and Sped's going to be talking to you through this one too. Take it over Sped. Alright, so you want to cross the bridge here you're going to get to your first group of mobs. Your tank wants to aggro first. It's uh, the initial aggro. It's very important to keep the enemies off the DPS. Then you want to go ahead and clear out this group here. Not too challenging and uh give you a good idea of how your group makeup is, depending on how fast you kill this first group here. Once you get past this, you have this annoying little cutscene that you cannot skip. So, enjoy that. And then you get to this part here, you actually see two enemies here being dragged together by a tether. Um, or a rope, or some call it, call it a tether, so you know what I'm talking about through the video when we get to certain parts. But um, that little tether, as you can see, it'll actually be pulling two players together, and uh, as the tether gets closer together, it'll actually, you know, do damage, and then it'll touch, and it'll actually uh, do damage to the players. So you want to try to avoid that if possible by uh, separating from the person you are. This first little hallway here, you want to just clear out uh, the enemies here. Go ahead and grab all the mobs uh, in the middle and uh, go ahead and go out. As you can see, these guys are not too tough, so uh, taking these guys down is not too bad. After killing these, you'll actually have several uh, groups of demons are going to spawn. One at either end of the, the tunnel here, or the hallway here. You want to go ahead and kill those. Uh, you want to kill this first group. You go ahead and get that down before the second group makes its way too close to the back here. And your tank can... Uh, we direct the enemies back here to make it easier for the DPS to come on in and kill it. Once this hallway is clear, you can go ahead and move on and uh, go through this first doorway into the rifts. At this point, if you uh, have a strong enough tank and healer, each one of you can take a separate rift and go ahead and clear these out. They're, uh, regular enemies. It's quite easy to go ahead and throw these on your own. After you clear the rifts out here, you can uh, wait for your teammates by the door and uh, make sure everybody's scooped back up before you move on to the next part. Alright, once everybody's through the loading screen and met back up at the door here, you can go ahead and go on through. And uh, again, it's better if you let your tank go first to get that initial aggro. You're going to clear out uh, a couple of groups of mobs here. Once you clear that out, uh, you go up to a, another rift. This rift will hold a Malfashni, a couple of uh, fire archons, or archons, and uh, these little guys can be defeated pretty easily. Chang wants to get a really good initial aggro on that uh, Malfashni, as he is definitely the hardest mob out of this group. Go ahead and beat that. After defeating the Nafashni, you go into the next room here, and that is actually your first boss. It is a Beholder boss, and uh, got a little interesting quirks to it as well. It's got some massive AoE. Mass AoE, you want to try to get that on the side of your tank, and uh, have the rest of the DPS and healer stand on the opposite side. That helps with combat advantage, but it also helps uh, keep the AoEs away from your uh, your DPS, your weaker players. This boss, as you can see, you can also spawn tethers. You want to try to avoid the tethers. Easy way to do this is by standing on either side of the head itself. Uh, standing on either side of the holder, you can actually keep a tether between you and the player you're tethered to, and um, that'll actually be able to avoid the, uh, the tether altogether and 
fight. If you were not able to get on either side of the head, you can just go to the opposite corners of the room. And uh, that also works as well, but unfortunately at that point you would not be able to be on your melee player or melee class. As you can see, there's lots of red circles in the ground here, as he does do a very massive lead to the front. Um, so you just have to do to watch out for that. If you are a ranged player that is not standing on the, uh, the opposite side of the tank, or you're having to redirect for the tether. This boss is quite simple and pretty easy to take out, as you can see. And we can go ahead and move on to the, uh, the next hallway here. In this hallway, there are several groups of mobs. You actually do want to uh, go ahead and run in and go ahead and start clearing these groups uh, one at a time. Once you get a little bit down the hall, there's actually a, uh, another rift that'll spawn, and you'll have a Valor boss. Uh, this Valor is actually on a timer, so if you are a slower group, the Valor can actually come up a little bit sooner. It is not based on proximity, so you know, as you do run down the hallway here, you can get closer. Uh, to the battle, or at least you can clear out more groups of, uh, on the undead. You want your tank to try to pull the Valor facing the opposite direction, so it also gives your, your team combat advantage again, but it also keeps that big sword swing, that mass AoE attack away from your DPS. Just kind of like that first boss there, your tank wants to be on one side while you have all your DPS and dealers on the other side. Once you defeat the battle, you can go on into the next hallway and uh, go ahead and defeat the Servitors of Orcus here. There are four of them, and uh, defeating them quick is definitely the best way to do it, as they do spawn in more adds. So, you want to run in, a little really nice little ad spawn there, go ahead and kill your adds, go ahead and kill your service or not too challenging. Um, on defeation of the, or on defeat of the Servitor, you do have to watch out because she can also spawn a tether. So being this really close proximity, it's very hard to avoid tethers and you will have some team deaths, especially if your team is uh, taking longer to kill these. So you want to try to kill them as quick as possible. We actually uh, got fortunate there. We killed all the enemies quick, uh, quick enough there, so we did not actually have a, uh, a tether spawn. That's exactly how you would uh, want to do it. After the servitors, you go to a rift here. You actually will have to enter this rift. Uh, when you enter this rift, there is going to be several enemies that are walking towards a center sphere or center orb. Uh, you want to try to keep the enemies out of that orb um, just by killing them. Once you get the enemies down to about half health, they'll actually walk away from the orb, giving you more time to, uh, to kill, it, kill the enemies. So, If you fail, or you have too many enemies get into the orb at one time, this little uh, death sphere charge will actually start adding up. It'll be like a little red bar. We'll, uh, we'll let one of these guys walk in here so you guys can see what uh, I'm talking about here. Um, when this guy walks in. This guy right here walks in. It will uh, actually show you a little red counter. There you go. And uh, if that red bar fills all the way up, then the fear, uh, sphere will explode, causing pretty mass AoE damage to all your teammates here. And if you're lower geared, it uh, might even cause you to die. You can see that mob turning around there. Drop below half. After this, you will spawn back in to the uh, little hallway here, and then uh, go ahead and go up to the second boss up this little stairwell here.
on this boss here, you will uh, have several different AoE attacks as well. You want your tank to get initial aggro and uh, be able to pull pull that as well as the adds that are spawned in towards themselves so the, uh, the PPS can kill all the adds so they can get struck. The adds actually hit quite hard. Uh, I would say the adds actually probably hit harder than the, the primary boss here, so you really do have to watch out for the adds. This boss will also flip the ceiling. As you can see, there is spikes up on the ceiling there, and uh, when the floor flips and uh, things like that, you do have to try to avoid getting spiked, as they do last time as well. As you can see, there's his AoE, it's little purple wells on the floor there, standing in those, give you a nice little debuff, as you get quite a bit of damage. As you can see the adds here, I'm gonna try to grab those with your tank, and as you can see the floor flip, there's not much warning there. There's supposed to be little red uh, red indicator markers in the floor, but they always don't uh, don't always pop up, so you have to try to try to time it. Killing this guy faster is better. Um, you know, if you kill him faster, the less floor flips and uh, better chance you have of defeating him. And he'll do it again. As you can see, sometimes it's pretty easy to uh, avoid those. All right, next part here is actually probably one of the most uh, difficult spots. Um, all you really have to do is quite simple: is you want to try to get on the the side, the right hand side or the left hand side, to avoid the enemies on the floor here. So um, when you get to this point here, you do want to kind of slow, go to your right, and uh, jump up and hop across these little benches here. That will uh, avoid the first little room of mobs, and that way you won't have to wake them up and uh, fight them. In the second here, you go down this little left left side. Again, you have to jump over some benches here, but again, you're avoiding the mobs. And then on the third far tier, you're just jumping down the right-hand side again and uh, avoiding this little last group of mobs here. Uh, if you were to wake them up, you do want to try to kill that group in place, because if you drag that group all the way to the end, one group will wake up the next and the next and so on and you'll have a bunch of guys all over the place. At this point you do want to try to avoid this green sphere here. It does uh, do quite a bit of damage. Um, some classes are actually able to teleport or shadow slip or you know walk through the, uh, the orb without taking much damage. But uh, it is better to just try to avoid it altogether by running behind or in front of it. When you get to this midpoint there's also going to be another orb and you want to try to take this left room here to avoid all the demons in this right room. If you do aggro the demons, they're not too hard, and you guys can go ahead and root back up and, and kill them. As you can see, the orb does go in a little pattern here and goes around the room. You do want to try to avoid it. And then there's more spheres here. At this point, you do want to try to wait in this corner here. This is a uh, kind of like a little halfway point between the orbs. Well, probably a little bit longer, maybe two-thirds of the orbs here and uh, you want to try to wait here and group up. At this point you do want to try to have your, your full group or at least the strong members of your group together. That way when you go into this next room you can defeat all the demons here. Your tank can pull all the demons to this one side, making it very easy for the DPS to get up behind the demons and uh, kill them. Again, it's very important that your tank gets initial aggro in this room so he can keep the aggro off these mobs as they do have very big AOE swings and they hit quite hard. And there's another little orb you have to avoid there, just stay to the left of the room and you can do that. Once you get through that, you get to the final boss fight here. This is actually the Orcus fight. Um, so we'll have a chance to, you know, change powers and do stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of classes will switch from AOE to, you know, single target or you know, a tank and switch his powers up to help him give him more survivability, etc. In the Orcus fight, Orcus can spawn several things. He can spawn tethers, he can spawn orbs like you just saw what we walked through, and uh, you do want to skip that initial cutscene there because uh, it is bugged, and when you do walk into the cutscene, you'll actually still be in the fight, so you do want to skip that initial cutscene. As you can see here, you want to keep your tank on one side and keep your DPS on the other side, pretty much the theme throughout this entire dungeon here, as uh, Orcus also has very hard-hitting AoEs, you can wipe your entire team. 
with your tank on one side here, as you can see, it's very easily done that you can phase tank him and he will spawn a couple different things. As you can see, we got orbs this time, so it is uh, very well you back out of that. So you're tanking uh, the chance to recuperate and not get inside of those orbs there. As these orbs hit a lot harder than the ones in the hallway there, the initial ones in the hallway. At this point, you do want to just get back in. Your tank gets initial aggro again and wait for your tank to get in there. Once your tank gets in there, it's very easy to uh, just run back in and finish off the boss. As you can see, we have quite a strong group here, so uh, we will go ahead and kill the mob. Uh, we'll go ahead and kill Orcus. But if you weren't going to kill the you know, boss there, he is able to spawn in another Death Sphere, like you saw on that initial rift. Um, so when he does spawn that Death Sphere, you, again, you just want to clear out the little mobs around uh, around the sphere and then make them you know, not get into the little sphere there. Or the sphere will blow up, kind of the same principle there. Orcus can also spawn tethers, as you see, he didn't spawn at this time, but uh, in, in place of those orbs, he can spawn tethers. Um, Orcus can also spawn rifts, usually that's later and after that initial first uh, sphere there, but uh, he can spawn rifts as well. Um, you can send one player into the rifts, preferably a DPS player, and uh, clear the rift, and that'll get it back to the regular fight, and it's easy to you know, continue to fight and DPS the Orcus down until you uh, defeat him. But some people choose not to and go ahead and fight Orcus through the rift. He hits a lot, you know, while it's hard and uh, it's easier for your tank and team members to survive a hit. But, and the flip side of that, he has shields put up and it actually takes less damage himself. So, um, you might want to uh, go ahead and take him out as quick as possible, as like you saw us do today. Um, then, as you can see, this is a, you know, kind of a tidbit here, you know, a lot of people don't really do this, but you can come over to this altar and you can go ahead and get uh, your prayers in. Um, this is optional, of course, you don't have to do this, but uh, it is something that we choose to do. When you look up at your, you know, your health bar underneath your name there, you can actually see your, um, your buffs. And if you look at the little copper coin, that is your blessing of Joaquin, and that actually increases your monetary gains, which any monetary gain is technically rewards, money, etc. So, you know, in doing this, it's very potentially possible that increasing your monetary gains could give you a potentially better drop out of the, the chest there. So, that is uh, the reason why we do it. So, any extra luck to get uh, good rewards is always worth trying. So, it would be recommended for you and your team to give it a shot after killing Orcus. And, uh, that? ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the how-to, uh, uh, Orcus, uh, Castle Never. Uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you later.